Uh, why is it chunky? You just started in the world of pyrography. And at this point in time, you're questioning yourself, hey, what the hell am I gonna do in this? Well, you know what? Welcome to the club. So in this video, I wanna take you through five different things I would recommend when you're first starting out to get accustomed to the pen and styles and everything that comes to biography. It's gonna be a simplistic video, but to be honest with you, I'd rather start simple than going ham crazy into highly detailed art pieces that you're probably like, I never wanna do that again. If you stick around, my final one is probably my most important. Hello, you pyromaniacs, welcome to the video. Today, I wanna take you through five different things that I would recommend when you're first starting getting into pyography. It's a very ancient art form and it's very unique in its own way. As a matter of fact, it's an absolutely phenomenal niche that not many people really know about or even considered before. So if you're getting into it, first and foremost, congratulations. Secondly, Prepare for hours upon your hours upon your time, just burning on wood. You're gonna have some fun times. My one first recommendation if you're getting into pyrography is just start making lines. It's as simple as that. Now, some people would be like, well, I don't want to just start making lines. Listen, it is super important to understand and feel the pen that you're using. Whether it's a brass burner or a steel nib burner, you have to understand that there are different ways and different feels that not only the wood will give you but what the pen and the different heads will give you as well so my recommendation for anyone out there if you're getting into this get accustomed to the head that you're using get accustomed to the heat and understand exactly what higher temperatures will do now this also depends on the type of burner you have if you have one that you can control the heat you can go from an extremely dark deep burn to a very light burn but if you have one where you just turn it on, that heat on that one can be a little inconsistent because depending on how long you wait, the hotter it'll get. And the more you use it, the cooler it'll get. And then you gotta wait again for it to get hot again. So it just depends on the burner you have. But in all reality, making lines with different nibs to get accustomed to what those nibs can do goes a long way to understand the capabilities you have. I've said it before and I will say it again. You can make any type of line and shade with any type of nib that you use. But some people, such as myself, like to use various different ones because I feel it gives a different type of sense and texture to the piece in itself. So I like to switch them out because I'm inconsistent that way. Start making shapes. These are very simplistic. I know. Leave me alone. Shapes in itself is actually one of the main things that will create an art piece, regardless if it's a triangle, rectangle, circle, octagon, the, the eight sided thing it's super important to see how your hand will work with that pen and how you can connect lines to pick certain shapes now you don't necessarily need to make shapes that we all know just take the pen to the wood and just try to draw something this actually gives you the ability not only to understand and feel the pen but also super important to feel the wood because sometimes the grain will go a certain way and when you use a pen on a certain grain it will behave differently as the other one for example, when you go with the grain of the wood, you're going to get a very nice crisp line going through. However, when you go to the side or against, you're going to have some more actual fight there from the wood that can affect the style and consistency of your line. So it's super important to make lines or make shapes, do whatever you're doing on the wood pieces that you would be burning. Now, I always recommend having at least a sample piece available to you to allow you to test and see how that's going to work. Because if you're testing on one piece of wood that you're not going to be initially burning on, well... You can see the disconnect there. My number three is start shading. Now I'm a big shader. I like shading. I've always liked shading. I feel shading is what gives the actual pieces depth, will give it a little bit of life, and will kind of give it a little bit of unique essence. Now, shading is not necessarily for everyone. And there's different variations of shade that I think a lot of people don't really know or don't really want to utilize. Now, I will go into different shadings on different videos if you guys would like. So if you like that, please do me a favor. Comment down below and leave a like to the video if you guys want to see a video dedicated to shading. But I will tell you right now that there are four different variations that I think I like to use that will go a long way for your pieces. And there are like such as this. There's cross hatching where pretty much you're having lines going in a diagonal. Then you're having other lines going in diagonal across overlaying it. That's very similar to how a lot of comic book style of ones are. You have dot shading where you're just literally dotting the wood piece and if you're holding it there for longer that actual dot will get deeper and darker and then you can go from there and just kind of start connecting the dots and when you want to have a little bit of a lighter shade you start connecting those dots but you add more space more space and lighter dotting so you're not pushing down as much 
that kind of gives a great sense of depth. As a matter of fact, I just finished a piece recently of Pazuzu from uh, Exorcist and that's dot shading and I love the way it came out. It's a great example of dot shading. Fading is very similar to dot shading. However, you're not actually adding dots. What you're doing is you're taking the nib and you're actually trying to fade the shade away. Now, what I mean by that is you're going to a part where you're an area where it's dark and you're trying to fade it to a light. There are different ways that you can fade and different methodologies to get the certain fade that you want. So it kind of depends on what your preferences are where you can do a simple swipe, you can do an actual rotation sh a shade where you start, you're, you're burning very, very low, but you're doing this at a consistent pace. So you're pretty much getting darker and darker every single which way you go. The one thing I will say about doing it that method is that it does take longer. So if you want to have the consistency and you want to be a little bit more patient with it, feel free to try it out because I think it's super important for people to know and again, experience different techniques for shading mechanisms. And the other ones are hard lines. Now, this is kind of one of my favorites because it really gives a very interesting shade concept. A lot of animes use hard shades and hard line shading, but what, what that primarily means is that there's no fade to it, there's no cross hatching. What it is that's a solid line. There's a line depicting the different shade variation. So you have, a, you have one shade that's darker, then you have a hard line, then the other shade that's co accommodating that is a little bit lighter, another hard line, and so on and so on and so on. So it's kind of split that way. I've done a Vegeta smirk uh, commission piece that has that type of shading. I really love it. It's actually really interesting when you're doing it with the, uh, with the wood burner. And if you can get a consistent shade throughout, the texture of it really made an interesting piece. And I think super, super important to look into doing that shade as well, because again, it gives very much a lot of depth. But that's my shading, and I'll be honest with you, I'm a big shading fan, I like shading, it gives very different, unique type of styles, and uh, I definitely think we should look into more of that with another video. Like I said, you want one? Hit a like and a comment down below. My number four is just draw something. Now this can be as simple as a stick figure or if you have something that you wanna to try to actually put on the board, use carbon paper to transfer it onto the board. If you don't know what how to do that, just take an image, tape it on the board, carbon paper underneath, trace that image. It should go transfer it to the wood, pretty simple. And try to see what you can do with that. Now, one thing I would recommend, specifically if you're starting out, take that same image, make it simplistic. Don't be crazy. Don't have it have like 1500 lines that you have to trace over. Just make it a very simple concept. Do a feather, a very simple traced feather, and test yourself to do different types of shades, going from at the very bottom of the feather, going from dark to light. Use cross hatching, use dot shading, use swipe shading or fade shading, use the hard line shade. Just draw that shape multiple times just to see how the feel of the pen is. And again, if you want, use different nibs. Try different nibs out and see, hey, I like working with this one a bit more rather than that one. This one bled more with the burn rather than the other one. So there's, there's it, every single nib will give you a different type of line depending on how and what you are looking for. And the best way and the only way to know how that line will be depicted when you burn and at the temperature that you burn at is by trying it. So don't be afraid to try out your nibs. You've got many of them. I literally have a little small container of mine. I'm a snack. I ain't using all of these. There's a lot of them, but I've tested a majority of them. My number five and my most important, make it your own. Listen, I can take or I can give you tips galore on pyrography. And yes, I'm still relatively new at it, but I feel I have a natural hand at it. But I can give you tips on pyrography and exactly how to get this and how to get that and how to get this kind of look to it and how you can get this shade to it. But in the end, art is art. Art is subjective. Art is stemmed from the individual who is creating. So if you have a creative mind and you're like, hey, listen, I like all these shade formats, for example, and I want to combine every single one of them, that's great. You make it your own. For me, for example, when it comes to my own style, dot shading is something that I really, truly do enjoy. However, I also like to add on top of that a bit of fade as well when I do the dot shading, meaning I dot shade first and then I do a fade out to a light shade. What that does, it adds a different type of texture on the piece. It also gives it a different type of depth, which is very interesting because there's two different forms of shading there. That's kind of how I make it my own. I also like to add one, at least one color piece to my piece to be able to draw the eye. That's just kind of how I do it. That's my own style. That's my own artwork. That's just something I like to do, and that's how, what I'm going with. But... Regardless of that, any type of piece you make, make it your own. And also have patience with it. It is 
absolutely a format of art that requires patience. It'll take multiple hours to get the style that you want to find, the piece that you want to finish. This one here took close to about seven to eight hours. It is extremely lengthy of time when you're actually developing something. And sometimes you may not like it, but in the end, it's a creative learning process and don't be discouraged by it. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, please do me a favor, leave a like and a comment down below. Like I said, if you do want a shading video, let me know and I'd be more than happy. Or if you have any questions about pyrography, let me know in the comments below and I'd be very happy to help you out. Also, we have a new website, heelscreations.com. Please do me a favor, check it out. Link is in the description. There is some fantastic pieces there for sale right now. Sign up for our newsletter. I do have some plans for later on down the line as well that I'd love to cover more specifically for individuals who are part of our actual newsletter on the website. So uh, dedicated content and also answer questions for you guys. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for enjoying. And I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful day, Pyromaniacs. And from me to you, keep burning.